Trini. Hello, darling. Now, it's Molly behind the camera for this set of closet confessions. So, Molly, this week, what are we doing? Mm, let me guess. <laughs> It's the long-awaited shoe video, and I thought I would do it with Molly so that Molly could be the voice of you and ask questions. I have, just need to start off by saying this is 30 years of shoes. There, it's a thing I've culled the least. There's a part of me thinks I'd like to keep all of them, but it's crazy. I wear about seven pairs of shoes and two pairs of boots out of 190 pairs of shoes. And then what I'm going to do at the end is I'm going to put aside the ones I really wear on one side of the staircase, and then the others, I'm going to put some away for Lila. And then the others, we might at some stage, whenever we feel the inspiration, we want to raise money for something, as Trini Tribers always give suggestions. We raised 20,000 pounds two years ago for the Australian bushfires. And I'd love to think that I could save those shoes up towards something like that in the future. But those of you who are thinking, oh, I love that pair. So look after that whenever we do it next. So, should we start? These are probably my oldest, and these are Dolce Cabana, and they are probably 1990s. And I love these. Now, I could still wear them, and I think I will still wear them. And luckily, I think, because it's a flat, Lila could still too. So I will keep that, and Lila will probably wear it, it would be a bit too big for her. But it's a beautiful colour orange for the summer, and you can wear it with lots of different colours. But you'll notice the rest of my shoes are very neutral for the summer. Another pair I loved, and again, I think I haven't put them on yet, but I need to put them on now. These are very old Gucci. And having gold or silver for the summer is literally the only flat summer shoe you need. They're lovely, they're tight. I feel these were a lila moment already. But then I can pick up these ones, which I have made in Capri. And you can choose the trimming and the binding, and I chose the pom-poms. For some reason, I went for the Swedish flag. The ones I wear the most, are these which are suede and I got these in Portofino and they're a bit dirty now but they're so comfortable. Leopard, I've never worn them, I got them from Zara last year but I sort of thought, oh a lovely leopard sandal. What do you think Molly? Mm. I just think they're kind of slightly also slipper. Yeah, yeah I think they're, they're more of a slipper. Go. All right, so that's sort of summery shoes. I'm going to go straight now to winter. My favourite boot that I bought um, a while ago is this. It's from Robert Tertiary. It's very architectural. When you wear something really classic, you put this on underneath, it's unbelievably solid. I never fall over in them, they're really comfortable. I could run for a cab, but those I will keep forever. These I've worn also a lot this year. And having a black boot, which is quite grungy, just changes out the dress, you know? It's a bit of just, rock and roll. It's a bit, thank you. <laughs> that comes from a girl in her 20s, doesn't it? So those are definitely to stay. Lila's favourite boot in my entire wardrobe is this one, which is from a salon. It's really the 70s Slade. Whenever Molly and I are getting clothes ready for stuff, we'll always say, what about the leopard boots? They make me six foot two, I don't mind. Do you have, have them in different colours? I also have brown, and that's it. All right, but in that vein of the platform boot, which I loved endlessly, it's my favourite kind of boot, Prada does that platform boot, and every year, they do different colours. So this just provides a seamless extension of the leg if I wear a cropped burgundy trouser or a long one. These are the same, another season where they change the heel slightly in brown, and I love those. And then these are a black version, exactly the same. And I will have these as long as I can walk in them. And they are oddly comfortable. Then ankle boots. <laughs> Have you ever seen me wear an ankle boot? The white boots I've seen at the this white. morning. The white are good. I'll tell you what the white are good with. They're good with a dress the length I've got on now. They're good with a um, cropped trouser. When the trouser is sort of cropped to here and, and it's just, you want a bit more coverage up to your ankle. When I look down now, I don't like them actually. How do they look? They're cool, not straight on, but no. at a slight angle. I know, which makes you feel they should go. They go. They go, okay, they go. Now here is my acne collection. I was obsessed when I bought these and I bought them also in black. The ones I wore the most were these. You can tell they were ecru and now they're sort of gray slash yellow. But just for that ankle boot moment for the summer, what do you think? There's something a little western about them as a well. A little western. They're a bit tired, I feel they're over it. They're going. They're going. They're going. They're going. Oh my god, you know we've covered eighty percent. Slippers? as comfortable slippers I've ever bought. Where are they from? They're from Fit Flops. Oh. I don't know if they still make them. I think Marcia Kilgore gave them to me as a present. 
and I wear them so much. And then I had a moth in them. I put them in the deep freezer to get rid of the moths. But they are like, and they also pom poms bring joy. These are, oh, these are what I love. These are from Christian Lebouton. And Christian Lebouton, I bought his second or third season. And when he first started making shoes, he was known for this flat, elegant, beautiful, kind of 18th century looking shoe. What would you wear these with? She would wear them. I'm going to give them a smile and a good look. But what would you have normally worn them with? I would have worn it with um, black smoking trousers and a clean ankle. Next up, I wore these two deaths from Celine. They were an espadrille with a difference. And I just think that my ankles are not as thin as they were. So I just don't know. That's so cool. I would wear them with that, just like that. And they are really comfortable. So I might have to bring them out this summer. It's a bit of edge on a normal sandal. It is. And this is a bit of an edge. This is Celine. This is the only shoe I have here which goes, I maybe have three more which goes straight to flat because I find that very uncomfortable. I've always needed a platform to give me the heel because this is a really high heel. Most of my platforms are not that high, that much of an arch. I sort of wore them with so many things and whenever I didn't know what shoe to wear, I'd wear these. But I think Lila could fit them because they have a back strap and I feel, you know, there will be a time in shoe land where this is a very cool shape again and I yeah. think even now, you might go into a design store and find this kind of shape of a thin wedge, elegant wedge, you know, some people find wedges clumpy, with that really lovely textured um, strap. These Christian Labaton did in so many colours. Summer shoe, but I just about fit them and Lila might fit them. And these are just great. Great colour. Yeah, great colour. Everyone should have what I call a neutral heel that will make your leg look endless. It's like I just look you know, taller, and you don't see anything on my foot, it elongates my foot. It you focuses can... on the outfit, your makeup. It focuses on the outfit. And sometimes, you know when you're wearing a dress which is so busy, you either make it less busy with an even busier shoe, or you make the shoe silent. And this is that sort of silent shoe. This shoe I love, it's by Sophia Webster, and she's a lovely British shoe designer. I wear it with jeans in the summer, these colours, there's orange, there's navy, there's purple goes with so much. I love the white freshness of the strap. And then I went in the store and I stupidly, very stupidly, bought these. Thinking, in you know, half size too small in the sale, still expensive, Lila one day will love them and they'll go with everything. But I can't wear them. I just can't. They're heavy um, and they're relatively comfortable. They're just, they're just too busy. I'll put them on for you. There's a lot going on. Okay. Then we have Nicholas Kirkwood, another lovely British shoe designer. And this is one of my favorite shoes. My hold this bit has got bigger, so I can't even get it done up. But it's also the kind of shoe that you know when you're at a party and the shoe's been turned and you've just become a flamenco to give a rest to one foot. Have you ever done that one? Yes. Make on the other one and just rest the foot. This is that kind of shoe. What girl wouldn't love that shoe at some station has shoe life? These I should get rid of because I think this to me feels like an old fashioned shoe shape now. When I bought these, which was the same time I bought the bags, it must have been like 2003. I don't know. I mean, they're in very good condition. They look like they shouldn't be open-toed, but then when you turn them, I was surprised I know. that they were. I kind of would have loved them to have been closed-toed. Yeah. A very successful shoe, which we've done on many closet confessions, is this shoe, which is from Zara. And Zara occasionally do this shoe, which is a part of their special collection. You know, they're doing the twice a year. So this shoe was probably 80, 79 or 89 pounds. And I remember I saw it and I thought, my God, that shoe. And it, I wear it with black tights in the winter and a black Zara dress, and I love it so much, the shoe. It's like my favorite high heel black shoe, more than my Prada's. <laughs> this is one shoe somebody gave me, an old boyfriend. Never wore them. He just didn't get the kind of shoe person I was. They're exquisite if you've got incredible legs. Classic Prada's, I used to wear them a lot, like your classic black court shoe. Would I still have a pair? Maybe, maybe. But I went far more than to this. This is the same as that brown boot from Prada. And this is a very 1940s shape too, but I wear it with black tights and it's just seamless. And it's really solid and it's very comfortable and it's cushioned. But then I have a few variations. So then I had these from Marnie, because I love the shape so much, but these now also the strap doesn't do up. So I think these might go. We'll go on to Terry de Havilland a wonderful designer, British designer, who really was inspired by Salvatore Ferragamo. So it was this kind of famous sort of rainbow shoe and it had this heel. And Terry de Havilland, I think, was really inspired by Ferragamo at that time. And he did this shape for years. 
and I collected them and I love them because they were elegant and a wedge. And so I got them in silver. That was the first pair I got. The snake skin just makes the shoe a little bit more interesting without being a color texture. So I got those. And then I think after that, I got more gold because I wanted a specific dress and these were a bit lower and they were more wedge-like and these are, these are like cushion, cushion, cushion. Wear them with anything, I must wear those this summer. I think the pair you love the most, Molly, are probably these. Yes. Okay. Which I wore the other day for something and these are by Aquazura from Florence. What can I say? It's a work of art. It's not easy to wear. All I can do is stand in them. My first wedge that I got from Louboutin and this is about 20 years old, perennially elegant, easy summer shoe. How many of you recognise this print? Do you know where this print's been, Molly? On a skirt and your bag? Yeah, on a skirt and my bag. And I think I wore the bag and the skirt together, but I didn't have these shoes. They were in storage at the time because I bought everything out of storage for you to see. But I just, I'd never get rid of those. They were in Susanna's wardrobe. She borrowed them. Susanna occasionally borrowed my shoes like this, obviously, to suit her. And I didn't see them for two years. And then I got them back when I was down there for a weekend. I went, hey, looking in her cupboard, my shoes. This is where, again, it's that animal print shoe, and these are Prada, and I've worn them a lot. And this, to me, is, I don't need any of those other shoes if I have the shoe, because it's summer, with everything, anything and everything. There's nothing I couldn't wear with this, really. It's perfect. These two pairs of shoes were the first time I bought a shoe that was really unusual, because there was something like a work of art of the shoe, and I don't know if it would still fit me, but they're just... So beautiful, because they didn't show much of my toe, which I adored. They went down enough here. This wasn't at my ankle, so I felt my ankle had room to breathe. The wedge was comfortable. They're quite high, and they go with trousers and dresses. Such a beautiful shape. It's just the most exquisite shape. And I can't tell you, I must have worn these 300 times. Cost per wear? Cost per wear is a pound. I got black, which I wore the same amount. Then we have here my, my Robert Cargery collection. The first one I bought like this. I think it might have been navy. And I bought them to go with jeans. And you can wear them all day and all night. There's different colors each year, but he'll always have some in the sale. And they're about 40% off. And that's when I usually buy them. And I've just built this collection up. This is my latest one I bought. I don't think you need any other colorful sandals with that. With that, I do. No. You're so right. Then I have bronze because evening dresses, sometimes I want bronze. And then I thought maybe sometimes I want really silver because Trini London and I need to have a certain amount, a minimal amount of silver. And then I saw these and I thought white for summer, that 1940s moment. I love the way it had that little chevron stripe like an Elia shoe has. Then I went through a period where I was very into Loma. You know, I was doing TV and I wanted to buy all my clothes because I never wanted to borrow things because I didn't want to compromise my style. And I did make lots of fashion mistakes, but I just felt, let me only wear what really suits me. So I'd save up, I earned quite a lot of money and I spent a way too high a proportion of my salary on clothes and, um, and shoes, obviously. But in that period, I bought quite a lot of Loma and I bought this shape and I continued to buy the shape. And I bought this one first, again, that classic wedge and it's in a sort of beautiful bronze peak toe. And I wish now, that I had more, which were oh, like this, when they weren't pito. But I look at this and I just don't feel it's sort of fashionable. There's something a bit too classic about it. And when I put it on, you know, if I'm 30 wearing that, it's beautiful. But when you're 57, you've got to be careful what looks cool and what suddenly makes you look too classic. This is a shoe Lila always put her feet into when she was little. This is the highest shoe in my wardrobe. I think it's probably 20 centimeters. It's from uh, Charlotte Olympia, another wonderful British shoe designer. Apart from Prada, I do support British shoe designers. When I bought them, I could hardly wear them, but now I just like... Phew. Okay, what else? I went through a phase of wanting suede shoes that were comfortable, that I could wear with navy tights. So I wore these forever from Bottega Veneta, and they're a sort of take on a brogue, but they have this lovely little detail at the back, the kind of as if they gathered the fabric. Can you see that? Yeah. And um, they were very comfortable and brilliant under trousers and lovely with dresses. This is one of my favorite shoe boots of all time. It's Balenciaga. I've worn these probably, cost per wear is about 10p and I have had them for 10 years. So that is my old life. Now at the moment, really, I haven't worn any of those shoes in about 18 months. So I've got these, which I do wear. I'm gonna tell you about my flat shoe history. So my first flat shoe was this. This is Chloe, when Phoebe did Chloe, before she went on Celine, and it's black patent 
and I've kept them in shoe trees and they are so beautiful, these shoes. I can't get rid of them. And I think one day, maybe when I'm sort of 70 and I can't even wear a wedge because I've got wobbly legs, or, I don't know, I'm saving up that moment when I wear the most beautiful black tuxedo trouser suit and I have these on the bottom. You either love or loathe a patent shoe, but a patent shoe, if you keep it well, lasts beautifully. And those are 20 years old. Then we have my introduction to wedges, um, flat brogues, and this was by Prada. These became my life, and um, I have them in black, and then I got them in silver. I have neon yellow somewhere, I don't know where they are, and then I got them in white, then I got them in white white, and then I got them in burgundy. And then I also got them, which I will wear again, in rattan. So then I discovered Stella. So the first Stellas I bought, these white ones, and I thought, my feet have come home, because it gave me the height. I was in a trainer. There was a certain amount of elegance. And then I got silver, which I've worn the least, oddly. Um, and then I got white with stars, because these whites were too dirty, but I haven't got rid of them. Then I got navy, which I wore so much. And then I got my favorite of all time, these ones. They bring me so much joy. And then I got the kind of gold. And then I discovered Zara did a wedge trainer, which I adored. And I wore so much, they were 29.99, brilliant. And I then discovered, somebody said to me, look at these. Exactly the same, nearly. Three times the price from Hogan. And then I discovered the Russell Romney, which I wear every single day. And I have one, two, three, four pairs. So that's the shoe collection. You know, it leads me to think, what in that do I really need? So your top 10 pairs? My top 10 would be, the white Russell Romney, the higher Hogan, a Stella, that's three, Robert Clergerie in a uh, winter, Robert Clergerie in the summer, that's five, the black boots, um, the flat ones that I wear, the chunkiest ones, six, the Prada platform boots, seven, a summer sandal in gold, eight, the Espadrille, one of the Espadrille high heels, nine, and the black suede platforms from Prada, ten. And I could live on those shoes. Hope you enjoyed it, but um, thanks for watching. Thanks, Bye. Trini. Bye.